Hey, in this video, we're gonna take a bit of a technical deep dive on how to get started with HCB Vault. We'll check out the platform in general, look at how things are wired up behind the scenes using peering, and then run through a few demos. My high level intention here is to gradually build up our understanding of what's happening under the hood and get you pointed in the right direction if you wanna learn more. All right, so let's dive in. The first thing I wanted to show you was the learn.hashicorp.com website. If you haven't seen it before, it's sort of a gold mine of great hands-on tutorials for learning the ins and outs of Vault. Say for example that you wanted to use Vault to store static secrets, things like usernames and passwords. Well, there's a step-by-step -step guide on that. What about if you wanted to generate short-lived AWS dynamic credentials? Say for example, you have a backup job that runs periodically and you just need a short-lived credential for that. Well, you can see we have a guide for that as well. We'll actually look at a demo of this in just a couple minutes. Or maybe you have a AWS RDS database instance and you wanna rotate the credentials. Well, we have a guide for that too. What about more advanced use cases like injecting credentials into a Lambda workflow? We got you covered there. Or what about injecting secrets into a Kubernetes workflow via a sidecar container? You sort of get the idea. That's why I wanted to show you this site because it can be a great companion as you're learning about HCP Vault. All right, so let's jump over to the HashiCorp Cloud Platform Portal, or just HCP Portal for short. You can sign in or create an account. I'm just gonna sign in. This is what you get when you first log in. Over here on the left, you have options to access the dashboard, create virtual networks. We'll talk about those in a minute. Then you have access to create managed instances of console, vault, or Terraform. Then down here, you have some account and billing stuff. On the main page here, you can also create console and vault instances via these shortcuts, along with a summary of your account. And then here, there's some of those links to the learn guides I was just chatting about. And then there's a way to contact support if you need help. All right, since we're here to talk about vault though, let's have a look. I've already created two vault clusters here, a single node developer instance and a multi-node highly available production cluster. Before we play around with those, let's look at what the create cluster page looks like. So up here, you can enter the cluster name. You can select the AWS region where you want the cluster. Then down here, you can select the type of cluster you want. Say I wanted a non-production developer instance, or we have a three node highly available cluster over here. All you need to do is just select the option that you want. Say I select the standard production cluster over here. You actually get a breakdown of three different options, small, medium, and large. The main difference here is the hardware that we run your Vault cluster on. Then down here, we have an option to give this instance a public IP address. We don't recommend doing this for production, but it can be really useful when you're first learning about Vault or just wanna prototype something. I'm not gonna click create, but if I did, it would kick off a process to build this cluster. All right, since I already spun up a couple different clusters, let's have a look. You can see our cluster name here. Then we have a snapshots tab where you can back up and restore from snapshots. This cluster tab gives you metadata about the cluster like the instance size and when it was created and that type of stuff. Then up here you have options for how to connect to the cluster, say for example, through the API or CLI. Then over here you can edit the configuration or delete the instance. We provide some metrics about the applications that are hitting the vault cluster. And then we have some metadata here about the cluster and how to connect to it. For example, via the private or public addresses. On this cluster, I chose to expose a public address just for testing. Actually, I put together a few diagrams that might help explain how things are wired up. So let's jump over there just for a minute. HCP has something called HVN or HashiCorp Virtual Network. You can think of this sort of as a secure holding area where your vault instance is totally isolated from anyone else. Then as you provision new instances, they can appear within this network. For example, a single node developer instance or a multi-node standard cluster. We then give you the option of how you wanna to connect to this. So when you created this cluster, if you said, hey, I want public access, we'll create a public IP address and then route traffic from that IP address into this private network. So then you can access the cluster via the web interface, API, or CLI. So this is public access and I'll chat about peering in just a minute. So if you wanted to access this cluster, we could generate a token or you could access the logs to say debug how something's working, or you can also seal the vault to make it inaccessible. All right, so let's jump over to our first demo. I'm gonna copy the public address here and then open that URL in a new browser tab. Great, it works. So that's sort of uneventful though, it just works. You do see that we're asked for a login token. So where do I get that? Well, let's jump back over to the HCP cluster page. Then I'm gonna generate a token here. Just takes a second. Then we'll copy this token, close this out. 
then we'll jump back over to the vault page and paste that token in here. And we're in. So we have a standard vault instance here with the default secrets engines enabled, all the normal tabs you'd expect. But you can also access it via the command line. So let's jump over there and see what that looks like. Behind the scenes, I've already downloaded the vault client onto my laptop. We're just gonna use that to remotely connect into this managed instance of vault. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set that vault address string. This tells the vault client, hey, I wanna to connect to this vault server. Next, since this is running Vault Enterprise, we need to specify the namespace. Then I'm gonna set the access token we requested earlier. Great, so we're all set up. Now let's try and list the secret engines and see if it works. Great, we get back a list of what's running on the server. So if you remember from earlier when I was showing you those learn tutorials, we have sort of a hello world example for Vault. First, I'm gonna enable a key value secret engine. Next, I'm gonna put a static secret into Vault, storing a username and password. Great, that worked. Now let's try and get it. Perfect, that worked. With that out of the way, let's look at a more complex example. I wanna remove the public address by editing the configuration. All you need to do is toggle this to remove public access. Then we'll update the configuration. This takes just a second. Great, now we don't have a public address, but how do we actually connect to this? To help explain how this is gonna work, I have a couple more diagrams that I just wanted to walk through. So we start just like we did before with our instances located in the HCP virtual network. But say you wanted to securely access these managed instances of Vault from your AWS VPC. You know, in your AWS environment, you likely have EC2 instances, you probably have Kubernetes, you probably have database instances, and you're probably using subnetting and all the recommended stuff. The way we establish this secure connection between these two networks is via VPC peering. What's so great about this is that you get a fully managed instance of Vault directly connected to your private AWS environment. So let's jump back to the HCB console and actually set this up and test it out via a couple demos. So to manage these peering connections, let's go over to the HashiCorp virtual network page. In here, you can see I've already created a virtual network using AWS, it's sitting in US West 2, and you can see we're using a non routable 172 address space. So let's go in here and set up peering. This page shows pretty much the same information, but it also shows what Vault clusters we have sitting in this virtual network that we can peer with the AWS. So let's go over to the peering tab, then we'll select create a peering connection. This will just take a couple of minutes, but I wanted to walk through it step by step and sort of methodically walk you through the process because chances are when you first set up your environment, you're gonna to have to do this too. So to establish this, we need three pieces of information from the AWS environment you wanna peer with. You need the AWS account ID, the VPC ID, and the address range of the VPC. So let's go grab all this information. I have a tab open here with an AWS console and I'll show you step-by-step step how to find these values. So we're over in the AWS console and this is the VPC I wanna peer with. The first thing we need to do is find our AWS account ID. You can find it up here under account settings. I'm just gonna copy this number. Then we'll jump back over to the HCP portal and paste it in. Next, we need the VPC ID. This is easy enough. We just go back. We're gonna copy this value and then we'll go back and paste it in. You can see here we need to select the region, but this is already defaulted, so we're good. Then we need to get the address range of the VPC. You can find that here. We're gonna copy this, then we'll go back and paste it. One really important thing here is that the two address spaces can't overlap because you won't be able to route traffic correctly if that's the case. All right, so let's create the connection. So what's happening behind the scenes here is that HashiCorp is reaching out to AWS and asking to peer with this VPC so that we can provide a secure private connection to Vault. In a second here, we should see this flip over to pending acceptance. Great, so now what we need to do is jump over to the AWS console and accept this peering request. Over on the left-hand menu here, if we scroll down to peering connections, we should see the request in here. Great, so we just right-click on this and click accept. We make sure it looks good. I'm gonna confirm it. Okay, we're almost done. So let's go back to the HCP portal and see what happened. Should just take a moment here and we'll see the request was accepted. Then once it's accepted, it should flip over to active. Great, so we've successfully created a private connection and it's active. Let's click in here and check it out. The final step here is that we need to update the AWS security groups and route table so that we can actually route traffic between these two virtual networks. 
In this section, you can see step-by-step -step instructions for updating your AWS VPC. You can think of these as command templates. We just need to provide a couple values. I'm gonna use the vault template here. So we need these two commands. One is for modifying the security groups to allow access. The second one here is to modify the routing table so that when the AWS VPC sees traffic for the HashiCorp virtual network, it knows that it needs to send it over the VPC peered connection. All right, so let's grab the values we need here. This is the final step. I promise it's gonna go pretty quick. So let's jump back to the AWS console under the VPC area. Let's go click on security groups. You can see I have a few different ones and you probably do too. This is sort of where it's environment dependent and you need to figure out what AWS resources need access to the vault environment. In my case, I'm just gonna select the default one. I'm gonna copy this and then jump back over to the HCP portal and paste it. The second thing we need to do is figure out the routing table that we wanna update. So let's go over to the AWS console, to the route tables page. Again, like I do, you probably have a bunch of values here and need to figure out which one, but I'm just gonna select the main route table. I'm gonna copy this and then we'll go paste it back over here. All right, I think we got everything figured out now. We have our commands. All we need to do is run these commands over on AWS to get everything configured. The nice thing about this is chances are you're not gonna be doing this every day. It's sort of a one-time initial thing you're gonna do when you first set up your environment. And I wanted to provide sort of step-by-step -step instructions here. So let's copy the first command here. And then I actually have a AWS command prompt open. I don't know if you've seen this before, but AWS added this cool command prompt option. All you need to do is click the command prompt icon and it opens a command shell right in your AWS environment. So I'm gonna paste the first command to modify our security group. I'm gonna run that. Great, so we just modified the AWS security group so now they can talk to Vault. Now we need to make sure traffic is routed over to that VPC connection. So let's copy this command, then we'll go back to the AWS console. I'm gonna run that. Great, so we should have everything working right now. I think we've set up all our security groups and the routing table to just work. The only thing left to do is actually test this out. Let's go back to the menu here, click into the vault clusters again, and then click on the standard cluster where we remove the public address. So what I wanted to do for the final two demos here is actually SSH into an instance sitting in my AWS environment and then securely connect to Vault over that peered connection. This will likely mimic what you're gonna do in a production environment. So I'm gonna copy the private address string here. We don't need to, but I'm gonna generate another token just because I don't remember what the other one was. I'm gonna copy this down and we'll close this. Then I'm gonna jump over to the command line where we can actually walk through a few demos. All right, so I have a terminal open here where I've SSH'd into an EC2 instance sitting within my AWS VPC. I'm gonna set the vault address to that non-public instance that's only accessible via our peered environment. Again, I'm gonna set the namespace since this is Vault Enterprise, and then I'm gonna paste in that new token that we just generated so that Vault knows how to connect to this instance. Let's run Vault Secrets List again and see if it works. I know this is very simple, but it proves that we're talking over the secure connection within our AWS environment. In that earlier demo where we were talking over the public address, we set up that example key value secrets engine and set an app username and passwords where dragons love salsa. So let's try and fetch that secret. All right, so let's move on to the final demo. So since we're in AWS, say you wanted short-lived, tightly scoped access credentials, maybe for integration testing or some type of automated scripts. We can use the AWS Secrets Engine to do just that, so let's enable it. Next, I'm gonna set up the configuration by passing in our AWS access credentials and region. Then we'll set up a simple AWS role that says, hey, for credentials generated with this, I want it to have this policy attached. In this case, it's EC2 access. Sort of the high level concept here is that you can use Vault like a remote control for AWS IAM credentials. Everything should be configured now, so let's generate some credentials. So what you're seeing here are AWS credentials that are generated by Vault that have that policy attached, as well as a time to live, so they're active for about an hour. This is pretty cool. But I don't necessarily want anyone accessing my environment, so let's revoke these tokens. Before we end, I just sort of wanted to circle back to where we started with that learn.hashicorp.com website. As there's tons of tutorials on there that have all the use cases defined really well, and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.